Yeah. The infamous <laughs> bearing race. The no, I thing. would if I had that ship. Oh. How, how have you built your ship out of the souls of the dead? Oh, are they durable? Because I don't know. It's not really my area of study. Ask Fargus or Leon. They would know. <laughs> Leon has no experience with building load-bearing race ships. Regardless, I suppose we have to use the amulet. <laughs> we don't want to be stuck here until someone else comes along. No. And then <laughs> we'll the see raft. them entering the harbor and they'll be... See, there's uh, your, your, your message uh, spell, which if you uh, if you had that or a scroll of that, you could uh, turn into a ritual to try and fling at... Uh, I do have that, but it might not work. Um, and then, there, of course, you could try looking around, like, the ruins of Creel, like, along the shores. There might be wreckage of other ships that you could make into, like, a raft or something. Yeah. That was John's initial idea whenever, like, you guys said, we're leaving. Like, oh, what? Like, do you know, like, another boat? Because, you know, it's possible, it's reasonable to imagine that some people went to the living dungeon, and they didn't come back. Mm -hmm. Their sailors and probably left them. Yeah, but then we'll have to repair the ship. Well, it'll probably take up. more than a day. and uh... It will take much more than a day, and it, this is fucking cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the idea of using the amulet because they are not going to expect us to be back. Yeah. No one is. Let's hope we don't teleport into some of the broken pieces of the academy. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the middle of the... Like, I think it was in, in the for entry hall, though. So. Yeah. But it's a really powerful thing. We only have one of these. Yeah, and then we can also Never tell... Never gonna get another one. We can also tell the... Uh, what's his call? What's his name? The image guy. We can tell the leader of the... Uh, Traptors? Yeah, him. Uh, that uh, what has happened before we sort of killed them. Or I mean, attacked them. I, I, sure. sure but you don't I, answer to him. <laughs> no, but... I, I really wouldn't want to waste too much time. And I don't think he would say anything but, well, go apprehend them then. Yeah, yeah I think it's a good news. what we would go do. Sure. We Just, are the um, process here. I think we have the time. So if we are, if we are gonna teleport, in, I'd rather go go and it. order the coast guard to get some uh, some ships in the water to uh, to make sure that they don't just you know Exit. leave. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, teleport back then. Although I guess that would be some physical. We, we could just wait until they're properly docked and off the ship, and then just jump them. The entire docks district is pretty fucking big. Like, it's not yeah, just yeah. one little convenient pier, and there are ships that do come in and out of the night. We need we need people watching for them. But, but if if I was, like, an evil adventure group who is associated with, oh, I don't know, something in Draconol, I would probably go to the district, the, the like, Draconol district in the, in the docks. Yeah, well, yes, but maybe they would rather, like, not be associated with Draconol to people. And yeah, go to the rich person place because they're rich really and they know. just had a success. But I don't think the the rich person has told the adventurers to kill us if he's just a collector. Of no, they stuff. decided to do that on their own, probably. You think? Yeah. I mean, John said there was an argument say, saying that they didn't expect us to be here. So they probably know of us and. No, if they are. know of us, then their employer knows of us, which means that either Mr. No, no, Rich no, they know of us because there's a bounty on us in the circles that they go to. Why would the, they the, just the... burn the ship then? That's not going to get them the bounty. I think one of their ideas might... Have it's delivering us. us to them. They're going to be like, well, these assholes are trapped in this stupid island for a while. They will either freeze, starve, or get really, really tired, and we can come get them later. Mm hmm Maybe they didn't really decide on anything. Maybe that's why there was an argument. Saying, should we just attack them? Should we go for them? Like, yeah. one of them was like, "I can summon like thirty wraiths." I'm like, well, I'll do it. Which we know which one summoned the thirty wraiths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so pretty, what pretty do we do, do then? We teleport back, and then summon the guard and get the guard. Get Watch for this damn ship. What's what's the discernible feature of the ship? What kind of ship was it? You couldn't tell. Too far away. And, and two hours seems a bit short well, of a just, time. Just to... um, just search every ship that comes into harbor and uh, like the whole is probably not like the, the, the best thing you got is that it was a ship roughly this like roughly like a similar size to what yours was. Yeah. 
We're looking for something roughly penis sized. I mean, yeah. alternatively, we could go and wait at their place. They might not go there, though. They might go to this collector guy first and deliver it, then go back. They might very well go do that, but then they will come back. But but what are they going to deliver? They arrived, saw our ship, oh, yeah, and yeah. then left again. They're going to yeah. go tell somebody. <laughs> they're they're going it. to deliver the orb you guys didn't have on the boat. <laughs> they're going to go uh, deliver the message that we were there, probably, and that they burned our ship. I'm going to feel really smug about it. And then they're going to go home with all their cash from, well, all their promised cash from, from, from the information that someone's now going to go out and check on. And, uh, and then, uh, then we're going to be there and say, hello, hello. Those uh, IOUs, who are they from? And uh, they're like, oh, um, oh, that's awkward. Your ship was there. Like, we send our uh, friend from Dragon Hall out there to, to check up on the, uh, on the state of the dungeon there. Tell your yeah, we got a message he burned you someone burned a boat. And we thought, well, you wouldn't happen to know about that, would you? They'd be like, cut the crap, we know you know everything, we're gonna kill you now. We're like, well, we'll freaking murder you, and then we kill each other, and then we don't know anything else. But we killed them, so that's good. <laughs> we loot their house and live there now. You can clearly see Draw Hero's favorite method of dealing with people. Loss of inheritance, if we kill the evil people who have it, it's ours. I don't know if that's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works here. <laughs> Take the house for evidence. <laughs> how is our loss? How well can you justify that with a loss? I will send Thomas at them. We request to be granted the house for dealing the uh, city service. Of killing these adventurers who had it. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best way to. Killing like you, you, you've done the city a service when they've, as far as you're aware, have befriended nobility. And that's how they're able to be in the heights. Yes. It's not gonna work. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the smile in uh, in your voice, Sadus. I mean, like, I'm, I'm sure the nobility would like to discuss that with our weapons. And <laughs> yes, you, you can always take that approach too. <laughs> I'm sure that they would much rather have us as enemies than friends, right? The great, the no. great slaughter like, of dragons. Like, like, like I, I'm not your morality <laughs> advisor. I'm just here to try and inform your characters of things they would know. Oh, the great, no, we're, the, the, we're the only capable adventuring party in town, so they will need us. The great, they're saying the great slaughter of Newport. Let it begin. That's what it sounds like. Draw your muscle. No. no. <laughs> this is what it's sounding <laughs> like to me. I don't uh, want to start anybody. Story. Just these. Are you imagining that they will answer <laughs> these questions? Uh, I'm mean, just basing it on what you're saying here. It doesn't sound very promising. <laughs> I'm saying that we need to make life really bad for these adventurers now because they made. Our life a little bit harder. I mean, it's used the fucking most powerful thing we had. So. Yeah, I think that there's two places where we can most likely find them very quick. Either their hideout in the heights, or the the like Dragon Hall per portion of the dock, because they very much seem to. So a specific place or a fourth of the city. Essentially, yes. But if their employer is currently. Maybe one fourth maybe. Of the city. That, that's a lot of maybes, no matter how you put it. Someone might see us go in there, though. That's just, uh, yeah. I'm just think, yeah. thinking that if I was an adventuring group who just did something unplanned because something unexpected happened, I would probably run to my employer and be like, yo, what the hell? But maybe the not heights the, have maybe their not own in the place. middle of the night, though. And Little Dragon Hall, I thought that was like in the Haven or near the Haven. Oh, Little yeah. Dragon Hall is in the Docks District. The it's, docks. A, it's a small neighborhood within the Docks. Oh, yeah, I constantly. I constantly see the Docks as being the waterfront. Damn it. <laughs> it's blue. Yeah. The Docks District, you know, it is on the waterfront, but it's not the water. I was like, that's the water. No, no, wait. No. Oh, I, I thought it was. Huh. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, it's, the, it's an entire it's massive district, and the water right, is north of that. There because that's too big. Like, and Little Dragon Hall is a, like, a several-block neighborhood within the Docks District. Mm. Made up of pieces of Dragon Hall. And, and that's so we why, can, like... Though, we have two hours. We can start by teleporting there, going to the guards, and be like, look out for ships of this size. Uh, they have uh, arson murderers on them, some of them. Um... We could even give them like a slight like these. This is what these arson murderers look like, because they are probably pretty distinct. 
being adventurers and all. Yeah, well, but there isn't. There isn't. Uh, and like, if they arrive here, uh, we would like you to um, know about it, I suppose. Because uh, we might be someplace else to do stuff. Well, How we'd probably stick, stick somewhere us? central then, where we could move quickly, uh, if we did that. Or we could go to their place and, uh, you know, walk into their home and uh, wait for them in their chairs. Looking at the door. We've been expecting. Already, so that when they come in, we can, like, pet their cat and be like, oh, hello. <laughs> the you are, chair and everything. You are, your, your porridge was horrible. <laughs> this bed was too hard. This was too soft. But this one's just right. Those are the two approaches I see. I, I think I'd, I'd rather go to that place because two hours is an awfully short time to get the yard organized. Yes. Yeah. It, took, yeah, sure, it, it I, took them I, a day to send eight people, nine people yeah. to, to raid a tavern. Eight, eight, eight. <laughs> in the slum district. Yes, the least important of the districts. I'm like, so this, this apparently is the guard here is much less interesting than the one in damn well Dragon Hall where the blue says... Go do this, and they go do it. Here it's, but we don't want to. Yeah, it's a difference between being motivated by fear uh -huh. and motivated by bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. I, See, I agree with that. So uh, let's go. That. <laughs> the dwarf king wouldn't stand for this sort of thing. No, he'd sit down and claim magical items. Yeah, <laughs> tell him. It's mine. Tell him. It's all mine. mine, mine, mine. I don't remember if he's still got a specific spot inside his boat just for you. No, no, he's got about a dozen different spots for me. For one for my leg, one for my other leg, another for my well, arm. Well, you can. I, uh, I moved all your tokens a while back back to Newport, I'm sure you guys noticed. Uh, is what you're going to do, uh, utilize the amulet to gather around all of Team PC? Yep. Yes. Okay. You uh, link hands, or basically everyone has to make sure they touch Duo Hiram Harska. And you're all <laughs> so cold enough that, you know, maybe it's not that uncomfortable anyway. And Duo Hiram looks down and grasps the, uh, the, the metal, and uh, he invokes the power. Uh, there is a brilliant surge of light, a beacon, which almost seems as if it shoots up into the heavens themselves, to the overworld itself. And that's when the five Manakai rolled that uh, got him the amulet triggers. As the five of you are uh, bundled up together and quickly whisked away to uh, the entrance hall of what appears to be the Arcane College of Newport. It's a quick blink. One moment you're there in the frigid cold of uh, the island, standing next to your burning ship. The Retribution. The next, you are uh, within the uh, entrance hall, uh, which is very quiet and dimly lit right now due to the time of uh, night, as it is very close to midnight. Actually, considering how much travel time you needed to get to the ship, it's slightly past midnight. Uh, however, you do experience uh, some initial frigidity, uh, and as you look down, you see why. All of your mundane equipment did not make the trip with you. Yeah. We are naked. Everything that you have that's magical came along for the ride. And yourselves. Everything you that's everything that's non-magical that you had with you is not with you. Wait. Weapons, Wait. armor, backpacks, food, money? drink, money. Money's not magical. Except for one coin Dwo Hiram has. Do you remember my horde? I don't have a horde anymore. Worm uh, wraps himself dignifiedly in the cloak. Uh, so I have no armor, no clothes. This is awkward. And, uh, stands proud. <laughs> this, 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 this initially would have put you in an audience hall uh, over in the wing that is now completely obliterated. So it defaults to the entrance way. Worm is invisible, and uh, <laughs> he, is, uh, he, is, he is now... Going to his uh, room to get a pair yeah, of pants before, uh, you know, before going to deal with his problem. Yes, this is <laughs> a base one pants. of our amazing plan. Gather pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ne necessary step of our plan. So yes, as a reminder, like 
all of your mundane equipment, the weapons you had, the armor you had, it's not with you. It did not make the trip. Anything magical that you guys had, that did make the trip. And your magical like, items are just as fucking confused as you are. Just saying, my leather-bound graphic depictions of chemicals and, and cults of necromancy, gone. <laughs> gone so, forever. I mean, they're not gone forever. They're probably laying there back there. So, if you have a health potion, and it's maybe in your bag or on your normal clothes that just fall to the ground, or you have it in your hand when you arrive, or... Would you prefer it to shatter on the ground next to you, or be with the rest of your belongings? Be with the rest of my belongings. Then that's where it is. Good. Who's those damn sailors so, now? So, wonder to get out the we, of those we, 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 We'll say that uh, the trip is limited to true magic items instead of your one use. Hmm. So right. Tempest is basically standing there with a, a leather jerkin that's on the floor and a ring. That's all Tempest has. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have, I, ha I have a belt. I, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you know, Tempest. It is so sad that you don't have the nail anymore because I thought that w w this would get triggered when you had the nail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel comfortable. <laughs> like uh, I, I, I thought. Well, guys, let's go deal with them. <laughs> <sighs> Tempest, Tempest is just sort of looking at the ring in his hand and at the floor where the leather jerkin is like wondering that's impressive how the hell did you go come with me as well I think about all the other people they certainly have like five very non-clothed uh, people just whom they know no, four they know who we are suddenly turned invisible who just like landed there and then looked sort of around and then down and then confused at all the other people standing here looking or if turned invisible and 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 the rest is sort of yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. as noted there isn't that much activity in the entranceway but there are still continuous repairs so your arrival does make quite a commotion with a brilliant surge of energy that pulses through cuz teleportation kind of has that effect it uh, makes a very, in, you know, very strong imprint uh, whenever you arrive. Uh, you attract the attention of apprentices, of, like, housekeepers, like, manservants. Uh, lots of, like, like gas of, like, confusion from those who don't really understand a powerful magic. You know, some turn into embarrassment. And then others, like, scurry off, like, deciding that this information needs to be kicked up the food chain. You know, there's evil afoot, and I'm naked. Get out of my get out of my way. Yeah. So, so one hour to gather clothes and a set of leather armor, and well, then we leave. It just says that we have no money. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, have no, money. no, we're in the arcane college, though. I'm sure we can borrow a set of leather armor. Yes, Mert, you are able. It does <clears throat> take some time. Uh, you guys just arrived. There's a lot of confusion. There's still a catastrophe. Lots of, like, arguing and, like, haranguing and shit. But it doesn't take that long and there doesn't have to be that much worry about it because Tempest has an unspent relationship die with the Archmage. And, mm -hmm. uh, Tempest is very able to clearly dictate the terms of what needs to transpire. And through his clear dictation which is very clear and obvious. Uh, the, uh, the people who uh, serve the Archmage go, oh, well, I mean, I guess we could fucking get our thumbs out of our ass and cut through the bureaucracy. And Lord Tarapus doesn't even need to get involved. As a matter of fact, we won't even tell him. He can stay asleep. How about that? He'll never know. It's the same wording. It's a case of, seriously, do you need to tell Tarapus? Is this something you would wake him up about? We just Later. need clothes, and we need to get it sorted. He would get pissed at you if we didn't get this sorted. So, let's do this. So, yes, that's your primary benefit. Lord Taraptus doesn't have to know. <laughs> 20, 20 episodes when he looks at us. <laughs> to him, that amulet I gave you so long ago and expressed that you should never use, except in the most dire circumstances. I didn't tell you everything about it. There's a secret. You're like, yes, we actually found out about that secret. It's like... As I what? watched it crumble into ash in my hands, I looked down and realized... <laughs> oh, I see the private thing. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 not that. It was actually a key. I knew you would never, knew you'd never use it. But mm -hmm. we're like, oh, well. But yes, uh, you're, you don't have to adjust your uh, armor classes or your weapon attacks. Uh, you're able to, within an hour, uh, get suitable enough equipment 
to match what it was that you wielded. It's just not, it doesn't have the comforting familiarity. Like, Fargus just has, like, a spear instead yeah. of his beautiful <laughs> antler thing, which is kind of like, aww. I don't have my fancy robes. I now just have, like, normal clothes. My, my I'm sure they have don't major have the, the pockets <laughs> anymore. It's just a leather cape. It's just like, aww. I don't my, I'm just saying, Manica, they don't my hybridization between, like, cleric and... You know, Torhum gets a dwarf-sized standard shape of robe, because they probably have those. They certainly do. We have plenty of them. Yeah, with the recent vacancies. <laughs> All right, so we, so dead so we get clothes. moving as soon as possible, I guess. Yes, so it's like 1 a.m., and you guys, uh, you know, bust out of the Arcane College. Maybe that's not an appropriate term. You exit quickly the Arcane College uh, with your new gear. Uh, and it is easier to move, considering how you are no longer burdened by things like your backpacks mm. and your money. And my shovel. <laughs> and your shovel, yes. Uh, from here, where do you go? To their I mansion. To the mansion, know, indeed. Do we know where it is? You don't know where it is. <sighs> Good yeah. thing we scouted earlier. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, if you had pinpointed the location earlier, then you could obviously head exactly there. Uh, Guard, could you lead us to this mansion? What uh, What's it called? <laughs> well, the uh... Death Hand Mansion? <laughs> Death Hand Mansion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, push that into the rest of the Arc Mage 6 uh, as you make it to the heights. And you're able to find someone who's uh, familiar enough with the situation... Uh, that you don't even have to go around and try to gather info right now. Because uh, that would be terrible for you to try to do that. Uh, instead, it is uh, uh, an acolyte furl unfurls a map and uh, gives you street names by which you could go by. At the corner of Get and Fucked, there is uh, this beautiful little place that's it's like a one-story brick building. It's uh, close to the Docks District. Uh, it's near the walls. And... Uh, just nicknamed Death Hands HQ. Uh, they stay there in between jobs. These damn nobles and their street names. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Get them fucked, yeah. What should we call the street? Get fucked, you stupid person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a little long to write on it. <laughs> I'll pass it between two. I, I really don't care. All right. I mean, did what you said. Yeah, I call that all the street names in the Heights are called stupid things because the nobles really don't give a damn. They're like named after like nobles of the past who were like responsible for some fashion or another for improving like, like the city. One of them had like whatever he had for dinner that day because that was what he like. Someone just asked him a question. He thought that was it, so mm -hmm. that's yeah. what he answered. This, he, uh, he, he, Newport's he, only a few hundred years old and it is rapidly growing. Yeah, there's all these new streets. Who even gives a damn? But that's probably like a street called the second left, but it's actually a right. Like it, it's, it's called, this, this one's uh, called bacon and eggs. <laughs> this guy's called salt ham. You know, it's like this guy's called a malt, please. There's one uh, no, not now. God damn it! That's God damn it! Avenue is my favorite city. Go down Avenue is my favorite avenue. Maybe, maybe later they will uh, they will rename the places as as the city as, as you know mayors and stuff need to have places named after them. I'm glad, but right now Newport has tons of roads. I'm glad my throwaway fill in the blank street name because I hadn't decided those are uh, are turning into such a beautiful tangent. They're canon now. Yes, <laughs> they're canon. <laughs> These names are just name stupid things because there's so many of them and the value of having things named nothing now. Naming inflation. <laughs> Name I inflation. Name stars. I don't know if that's how it works. I I'd like to imagine Gohira rambling about this exact topic while we <laughs> rush to their hideout. Sure. Also about how he's how this woolen clothes is super itchy compared to his old ones. Yes. Well, uh, uh, very quickly, uh, trying to follow the directions to the best of your ability, you scurry for the headquarters of Death Hand HQ, where, uh, through a, this most amazing, like, convenient turn of events, especially because it took you guys so long, uh, 
Yeah, you're walking down the, the street one way. You're walking down, like, Git Street. And then uh, you hear, like, chatter coming down Fuckton Alley as you guys are walking quickly. And there at the corner, in front of Death's Hand HQ, it's, uh, like a curious thing where it's almost as if the two sides are suddenly meeting, just, like, bumping into each other on the pavement, basically in front of their headquarters. Do, do you guys want to talk? So we take our surprise round? Yeah. To their That's credit, yes. they, to their credit, they are trained adventurers, and you guys were running, so no, they most certainly heard the sounds. Wait, what's this? And they're just looking over as they see us, like sort of skid around the corner, and like. Like, <gasps> if you guys had made it here first, then yes, you would have gotten a surprise round, because you would have been able to like lay an ambush. But from my understanding, you wanted to rush here as quickly as possible. Yep. And so, like, it's kind of easy to hear running on the pavement. Because they were still they were also running. They were yeah, not also to see running. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, they are trained professional adventurers. Uh, momentary surprise will not dull their senses enough to go into action. All right. Well, Thomas, you wanted to talk? No. O okay, all right, sure. So they introduced themselves by burning our ship and killing the sailors we hired. Or two so of we'll them, see least. who's li alive at the end of this, and then... You know, that's what you wanted to do, I believe. And no, well, I, I wanted agree. to do That's you. That's all you. But fine. Yes. We'll do it you. You do your way this time. So, yes. Uh, I'll go ahead and note out. Roguish, dapper-looking fellow. Uh, these folks do look as their portraits depict it. Uh, he is armed with... Uh, let's see here. He is armed with a sword and a variety of daggers. This individual is clad in plate mail. Uh, he wields a great sword. Uh, and he has got uh, emblems of the dark gods up on the plate. Oh. This guy, uh, his aura, very aura, emits death. And his eyes glow. She doesn't have any weapons, and she's clad in a simple robe. She is her first. Yeah, basically. So we have rogue, fighter, Necromancer and... Paladin. Maybe. You guys can go I ahead and roll for... You guys can oh, go ahead yeah. and roll for initiative. Uh, just to right. ask before I roll, Grimmie, I because I can't edit my macro and I forgot that's the 1-8. Is it a plus 14? It is now. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank God, that's probably the first good yeah. initiative roll I've had. Initiative window is not where it's supposed to be. Here. Just saying. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't know how you have such a high bonus. I just took it minus. Oh. I guess it's average. Mm. But. Yeah, it's improved the initiative in a dexterity modifier of five. So go ahead and do this for them. Oh crap. Let's see here. MOG. Vane Delacroix. Ah. This is Vossler. This is Irvine, and he'll be using his magic item to give himself a plus ten to his initiative roll. Oh, I want that. Mm. Mm. Twenty-seven. Well, Asherah. we might get their magic shit. And the if two rifts will act individually. <laughs> well, so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> they were going <laughs> individually, you see. Okay. Irvine uh, blinks in confusion. Uh, there is an aura of gray and violet, which comes to life around him. Like, tilts his head, saying, Well, how about that? They had another trick up there. <laughs> he, like, waves uh, at the race, and he'll actually step forward and point at Thomas and attempt to cast a spell. All right. Your, uh, your counter magic only works when you're, they're nearby, right, Medi Yeah. Okay. This is against Thomas. Uh... HP levels are so high for you folks right now. It can only be against Thomas. It's sleep he casts. Ooh. That is a hit. Uh, which means that uh, Thomas uh, loses all control over his faculties. He falls asleep, slumps over onto the ground, unconscious and helpless. All right. As the wave of magical exhaustion hits him, and he is no longer able to stand up on his two legs. 
the necromancer wizard sneers. Let's see here. Let me check to confirm the uh, condition. Just so I can like reread it. There it is. Yes, unconscious uh, means that you are helpless. Uh, you're a lot easier to hit, so minus four penalty to all of your defenses. And you can be the target of a coup de gras. Okay. Vane, the charismatic leader of the group, will uh, step forward in front of Irvine, and he will fling a blade at uh, Fargus. One of his throwing knives. As a 25 versus armor class on Fargus, that's an even hit. 14 ongoing damage, and Fargus is hampered. Save ends. Oh. Oh. As the blade uh, sticks itself right into your thigh, and uh, is such a painful distraction as barbs uh, latch out from the blade that you just can't focus on spellcasting. And uh, Vane says, and you brave ones thought that you could actually take on the power of Death's Hand. You should have stayed on that island where we left you. Tempest. 